Welcome into the Sports Radio 810 NFL Draft Recap presented by Missouri Farm Bureau Insurance. I'm Bethany Bowman, joined here by Sterling Holmes. We're excited to break down the Chiefs' seven draft picks this year. Thanks so much, Sterling, for being here. Yeah, thank you. I'm stoked. Well, people are raving about the NFL Draft and specifically what the Chiefs were able to do this year. They've been getting great grades, you know, lots of different outlets going through. And, you know, I've seen the Chiefs at tops of tons of lists on, on what they were able to, able to do this NFL draft. Yeah, it's wild. When I have a lot of friends in media from other organizations texting me and saying, how did the Chiefs keep doing this? How does Brett Veach keep getting away with this? It's just, once again, the process, I think, that the Kansas City Chiefs had in this draft was perfection. Now, we might not know what these guys will become down the road, but you cannot knock the process. You know, per source, uh, I, I like to use that, per source. You see that a lot on uh, articles. And so I'm not going to name the source, but, you know, I've heard the Chiefs themselves were a little bit surprised at, you know, after they got that first-round pick and Xavier Worthy getting Kingsley, Kingsley Suamataya in that second round. I mean, they, they were shocked. They didn't figure that he would be still available. The Chiefs are just great. Brett Veach, so smart. I mean, the way that they're able to uh, kind of play the game a little bit, they have that down to a mastermind. Are you surprised at those first two round picks? Yeah, first, Kingsley Sumatia, I was shocked. Um, I think a lot of folks, myself included, we had him mocked at 32 to Kansas City. So the fact that he was still there, the Chiefs tried trading up actually earlier into the mid-50s, early 50s. Teams weren't biting. Teams basically told them, pound sand, and the Chiefs still ended up with their guy. And you look back at this, and what does that tell you? The fact is, also, they tried to trade up higher to 25, around 25, for Xavier Worthy. Couldn't get that high. Got him at 28 with the Bills, that trade. That saved him probably a Jaden Hicks. That probably saved him a Jared Wiley, right? That saved him a fourth-round draft pick. That is what the NFL and the teams not willing to trade higher with the Chiefs. It saved them. This was best-case scenario for them. They got their guys. They kept their picks. All it was was a few trade swaps. Um, But Kingsley Sumataia, I I think, is a great addition because what he does, you no longer have to bring in Donovan Smith, a veteran. You now have a legitimate camp battle with Wanye Morris and Kingsley. Whoever wins that camp battle deserves to be the starting left tackle. Now, if you know me, I'm a little higher on Wanye. I think he has the uh, leg up in the competition. But... When you bring in a guy who's had as much experience as Kingsley with the upside that he possesses as well, training camp cannot get here soon enough. I'm excited. It's going to be great. And, you know, the rookie minicamp actually starting very soon. So we're going to be able to check out some of these guys, see what they have uh, very quickly here in Kansas City. It happens fast. But let's go through these picks, you know, kind of round by round. Round one, pick 28, Xavier Worthy, obviously the guy that the Chiefs wanted. Uh, I was a little bit surprised he was still available even at uh, pick 28. You know, the Chiefs trading up with the Buffalo Bills. Cannot believe the Bills wanted to <laughs> trade with the Chiefs, but able to get that done. 4-2-1, the NFL 40-yard dash combine record. I mean, you can't coach speed. It's interesting. I think people would have a different viewpoint maybe even a more positive viewpoint if you ran a 4-3. And what I'm saying is people are now using that as a knock against him, saying he's only a fast guy. That's all he has. And then you'll see detractors pull up his speed compared to another guy, a few guys, John Ross, right? Uh, Darius Hayward Bay, guys who were only speed dudes. Well, what's different about Xavier Worthy was he was a three-year starter at Texas. 12 games, 13 games, 14 games. He stayed healthy at his size. He had production at Texas. His relative breakout score was phenomenal. As a freshman at Texas, going for nearly 1,000 yards, okay? He's not just a fast guy. He is a great wide receiver who happens to be extremely fast. There's a difference there. Phenomenal route runner, and yes, there are going to be some questions about what can he do at the line of scrimmage against press man coverage, but what Andy Reid does so well, he gets these guys in motion. It's the whole eye candy conversation, right? He's not going to have a whole bunch of, all right, Xavier, you line up out there going up against Legereus Sneed, have fun. No, Andy Reid's going to get him in motion and get him some nice openings at the line of scrimmage. So I'm not quite as worried. Now, I will point out, I was actually, I'm not as opposed to what the Bills did. I know it's fun to make fun of the Buffalo Bills, you know, saying maybe they only had 13 seconds to make a decision. That's why they made this move. But they thought there was a pocket of wide receivers. They didn't care who they got. They just wanted to acquire more draft picks. They don't care if it's Kansas City or not. They said, we want to make our team better rather than try and screw the Chiefs. Okay? I get it. The Ravens operate that way. The Chiefs, I think, for the most part, have operated that way. But what the Chiefs thought, 
Okay, Xavier Worthy is clear-cut their wide receiver five. They didn't have that pocket. They thought it was Xavier Worthy, then Gap. They thought the value of Xavier Worthy was worth trading up for instead of standing pat. Maybe he gets took by the 49ers. And now you're stuck with Ricky Pearsall, Lad McConkey, Xavier Leggett. They thought, the Chiefs, that he was clear-cut wide receiver five or they would not have made that move. And the Chiefs obviously love to have guys that can fill many roles, you know. And so Xavier Worthy is going to be a guy that we could see on special teams too. And Andy Reid said that night one, uh, he's not just a wide receiver. We could see him on special teams, and he will start out doing both for the Kansas City Chiefs. He has the second best punt return average for a career and season in Texas program history. It's absurd. Now, I know the size is going to worry a lot of people in the NFL, but. I sit here going, yeah, well, Bo Jackson was a freak of nature. He got injured. No, I know I'm maybe cherry-picking here, but I do think to an extent we get so worried about size, and in particular on, on, on punt returns and kick returns with the new kickoff rules. I mean, how fun is it going to be to have Xavier back there, right? Could, could be electric. But I think we always we point to injuries and say, you're small, you're going to get injured. You point to Tank Dell, look, you got injured last year. Deshaun Jackson stayed healthy how long in his career? How often do you just see big guys get injured in the NFL? It's football. Dudes get injured. So I don't want to use size as this massive detractor for not using him on special teams. Because I do think his value is, is such that he's going to be a game-changing punt returner. He had, what, 40 punt returns in his three years at Texas? Yeah, something like that. Let's you see. use him in that role. When you can get a, a value there, when you can get a guy who can not only impact the game as a receiver but as a returner, you do that. Now, eventually his wide receiver prowess, we hope, outweighs the value of him as a returner. That's what the Chiefs did with Tyreek Hill. Now, I don't think he's a Tyreek Hill replacement. I know folks keep clamoring saying, when's the Tyreek Hill replacement going to come in? That's not his style. He is more of a Deshaun Jackson than a Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill is one of one. Okay, If, if you try and find the next Tyreek, you're searching in vain. But what you try and find, in my opinion, another guy who was actually in an Andy Reid system when he was with them with the Eagles, and that's Deshaun Jackson. That's where I think Xavier Worthy really fits. Moving on to round two, pick 63, Kingsley Suamataia. Offensive tackle from BYU. The Chiefs traded up for this pick. One spot with the 49ers. Yeah. Uh, what's interesting is they tried trading up again higher to grab him. Weren't able to get into the 50s, but they had their eye on Kingsley uh, you know, Brett Veach talking about, you know, 10 spots earlier than that. Yeah. They liked him. High upside guy. Now, it's a little interesting. BYU's not known for uh, um, putting out the best offensive lineman, but there's obviously that Andy Reid-BYU connection as well. I love this pick. One of my favorite picks the Chiefs made, if not my favorite pick that they made. Again, I thought he was going to go around 32. I'm looking around at all these other teams who are picking these other tackles. A guy from Notre Dame, Patrick Paul, who, again, a lot of people thought Patrick Paul might go to the Chiefs around 63 or 64. You're looking at all these other guys go. And I'm sitting here going, have these other teams forgot that Kingsley Sumataia is still on the board? Have they just assumed that he went early in the second round? Because I can't find an explanation why those dudes went above Kingsley. I love this. I love this move for the Kansas City Chiefs. Um... Getting him and Xavier Worthy, two positions of need, left tackle and wide receiver. And I think both great values as well. Both the trade-ups were very minute. Again, you're not losing draft capital. You're more, more or less just moving back in the draft. I think you have to be thrilled yet again with the process. Again, we don't know what these guys are going to be. But all we can judge right now is the process, and the process makes sense. Yeah, and I've heard that, you know, kind of in the Chiefs' eyes, this is like getting two first-round picks, like you said, yeah. uh, to be available, you know, after those first 10 picks. And then another 10 picks go by in that second round, and he's still on the board. Unbelievable. He has uh, split time in his college career at both right and left tackle pretty equally. Uh, so versatility there for this guy, too. And the Chiefs, as we'll get on to a little later on in this draft, as you will notice, They've always praised and needed and lauded versatility. That's what this team is built on. Secondary, wide receivers, uh, offensive line, especially with Nick Allegretti leaving, Andrew Wiley leaving the year prior. They need some versatility on the offensive line. Um, we'll get to Norzad, I know, in the fifth mm -hmm. round. That's where I think you really see the versatility lot, shine. Yeah. yeah, he's played a, a lot of positions. We'll definitely get to that. But I want to first move on to the next pick for the Chiefs. Round four, pick 131, Jared Wiley, tight end from TCU. You know, if you're Jared Wiley, you have to be thinking 
the Chiefs think pretty highly of you if yeah. uh, you've got a guy like Travis Kelsey playing the position right now. Uh, the Chiefs have always asked a lot out of their tight ends, and this is a guy that fits that mold. He's uh, you know been on the line, off the line to start at the tight end position at TCU. He also spent some time at Texas before TCU, yeah. so uh, been at two colleges, but I know the Chiefs were really high on this guy. Yeah, this one's interesting. Now, I know I was very high on the first two picks. This one's more of a, we're going to wait and see. And okay. it's not a knock against Jared Wiley. Okay, some of the positives. Eight touchdowns last year. I think he'll be used in the Jody Fortson role, where Jody Fortson was this athletic freak of nature who the Chiefs could use and utilize in the red zone. Well, I think Jared Wiley possesses a lot of those same traits. He was a former quarterback as well. We know how much Andy and the Chiefs value that. They want to see um, what these players can do from a quarterback's perspective, especially once you get into the red zone. That's what makes Jerry, uh, Jerry McKinnon so phenomenal in the red zone. So I think you'll see some of that from Jared Wiley. My concern is, again, less with him, it's with the position. Tight end, in my opinion, is the hardest position to evaluate, not just for me, but for the entire NFL. You look at first rounders, second rounders, third rounders, fourth rounders. They're littered with with high and highs and then low of lows. I don't think there's a great way of evaluating tight ends quite yet. Teams have tried. Teams have failed. You know, Travis Kelsey, third rounder. Mark Andrews, third rounder. Uh, George Kittle, fifth rounder. A lot of the best tight ends have gone around this spot. So maybe you say, okay, maybe there's good value here, if you will. But you look at the Noah Grays of the world. How does this tight end room shake out are they going four tight ends are they going to have four tight ends on the 53 then maybe only three active on game day you just brought in Irv Smith Irv Smith only has three hundred eighty four thousand dollars guaranteed in his contract so if they had to move on from him they could what does this mean for Noah Gray um I just don't see a clear impact especially this year for Jared Wiley again we'll see how this plays out but maybe this is more on me than him in particular I don't know how to evaluate tight ends. I didn't see anything that makes me extremely excited again. The eight touchdowns are nice. I'm always cautious with tight ends. This is going to go on one of those videos when Jared Wiley is an all pro and they're going to cut you out (laughs) talking about uh, I said cautious. How how you're not sure. Um, I said cautious. I'm not not bashing the dude. Come on now. I'm kidding. Bethany. 6'6", 249 pounds. He also had just one drop on 120 targets during his career. I do like to see those hands. I know that's been a frustration for Chiefs fans uh, over the last couple of years. This guy can catch the ball. Yeah. Again, for me, it comes down to opportunity. How much opportunity is he going to have? Uh, He is a decent blocker. This most likely means no Blake Bell coming back this year. So you're going to have these four tight ends, Irv Smith, Noah Gray, Kelsey, and now Wiley. Um, I'm intrigued. I'll I'll, I'll leave it there. I'm intrigued. While we're on the tight end discussion, Travis Kelsey, a contract a readjustment, not an extension, yeah. correct? Yes. So not, it, not, is not it a an raise? Extension. Is it, it's a what raise. What is it? It's a raise. Okay. It was about $4.5 million extra coming to him uh, starting this year. It's great. But he's now signed through 2027, and he wasn't prior? Can you further He has two years that? left in his contract. The, okay. the, the original report came out wrong because the original report okay. came out that everyone's like, oh, so he has two more years on the two years he already has. No. Okay. Two years that left on his contract. A yes. uh, little bit of uh, back and forth right there. But who knows? Um, you know, Jason Kelsey at one point had a couple years left that he was going to retire. He came back for one more time. So just because Kelsey has two more years left on this current contract, I don't think it means he's completely done after that because we know that dude loves football. That dude's going to be hard to, to, to hang the cleats up when you're continuously stacking Lombardis. Plus, who knows how close he's going to start getting to Tony Gonzalez and some of those all-time records. He might stick around for one more ride. So after three straight offensive players picked by the Chiefs in the NFL draft, we get to round four, pick 133. The first defensive player selected for the Chiefs, Jaden Hicks, a safety out of Washington. He is uh, 212 pounds and height. He is 6'3". That's some good size. Yeah, big dude. Um, More of a box safety. I like this pick. A lot of folks around the NFL had him projected in the second round. A lot of folks had him as the second safety taken. He's a very good player. I don't know why he dropped this far. And the interesting thing is when a a team takes, for example, Bo Nix at 12, the Broncos took Bo Nix at 12. We all think that's a reach, right? Right? We think this is a a reach. (laughs) We we think that's a, a, a pretty good reach. It only takes one team to reach for a guy. It takes every team for a guy to fall. So, 
Should we have some concerns about why Hicks fell? Maybe we should, but I don't see any off the bat right now. He is more of a box safety, more of a Justin Reed type. So if you're reading the tea leaves here, this might be the final year of Justin Reed here in Kansas City. I love Justin Reed, but you can get a lot of production at safety on rookie contracts. This is what the Chiefs have done. How many, how many of these safeties and secondary members have they brought back for multiple contracts? Very, very rare. So this might be the replacement. But they also love a lot of three safety sets. You like a lot of Brian Cook, Chamari Connor, Justin Reed. Maybe this year you will see some Hicks thrown in the mix as well. Um, very good at the line of scrimmage. Very good at the line of scrimmage. A sure tackler. I love this Jaden Hicks pick. Um, the versatility he brings. If you run a little dime package, you might be able to throw him out there. Uh, if you want to use him instead of Nick Bolton, because he is a solid tackle. If you want to have Drew Tranquil out there as well as bolster your, 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 your defense, the area, a guy who can go up against tight ends, against running backs at the backfield, you might see Hicks on the field. How much this year? I don't know, but I see a clear path in the future for Jaden Hicks. As you mentioned, not sure why he slipped and, and fell a little bit uh, lower than you know you had expected. Several other outlets thought the same. You know, you had uh, Pro Football Focus, number 54 overall player. NFL Network had him 78. Um, the Athletic, someone even had him as number 39. I mean, no. this is a steal for the Chiefs at 133. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to complain. I am not going to complain. Nice pickup. Uh, next up is Hunter Norzad, O-lineman out of Penn State, 6'3", 319 pounds. That's the guy you said you wanted to get to on the yeah. versatility for sure. He was the round five pick, 159 for the Chiefs. I like it. I like I, this pick. I love this. It's not sexy. When you draft an O-lineman, <laughs> sorry, offensive lineman, um, unless you're, you're, you're Joe Alt at fifth overall, you're drafting a tackle in the top ten. Typically, offensive line's not this fun, sexy pick especially an interior offensive lineman. The Chiefs needed this. This is a depth piece. This is a guy who maybe he blossoms into a starting guard with the Joe Tooney contract. With Trey Smith, the guard contracts around the NFL have exploded. We don't have enough time to get into all the contract situations with the Chiefs right now, but you're going to pay Creed, you're going to pay Trey, you're going to extend Joe Tooney. How's this going to work? You need some replacements, and you might as well get him in the, in the system right now. Hunter Norzad is going to be the Nick Allegretti this season. Whether it's him or Mike Caliendo, you at least want one of those guys. So Hunter Norzad played right tackle. He's played center. He's played guard. Because right now, there was no one on the Chiefs roster who played center outside of Creed Humphrey. They need that versatility. They need someone on the interior who can play both center and guard. The Chiefs value that. So I like Hunter Norzad. Uh, his RAS, relative athletic scoring, is very high. The Chiefs, this entire draft, have... Try, try to go by that. If you've looked at the RAS, relative athletic scoring, the, the seven picks the Chiefs made in this draft, all those guys, very high. So they're bringing in athleticism and hoping to develop some technique as they go along. I like that strategy, especially in the O-line with Andy Heck. A couple things that stuck out to me about Hunter, he didn't allow a single sack last season. That's obviously huge. He was also rarely flagged during his time in school, just three times in 24 games over the last two seasons. I like that. I like the discipline out of this guy, too. I think we all liked that after what we saw from the Chiefs last year, especially at the tackles. We, 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 we are tired of seeing the laundry on the field. Yeah, absolutely. So excited about Hunter Norzad. Any, any other thoughts on him as we uh, close out and move on to the next guy? I think that's it. Okay, I all think right. That's well, it. we'll have to see. He'll have to give us some more maybe here in rookie mini camp this weekend, and uh, we'll see what he can do. Next pick for the Chiefs, Kamal Haddon, Tennessee, 6'1", 197 pounds. He was the Chiefs' six-round pick, and it was pick 211, cornerback out of Tennessee. Yeah, and he had that shoulder injury that uh, ended his year last year. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and throw this out. Six-rounder from Tennessee with an injury concern. Yeah, Trey Smith. Yeah, I like this. I like this pick a lot. This was a phenomenal value pick, especially in Steve Spagnuolo's defensive system. 6-1, corner, very physical. His ability to stay with receivers was actually phenomenal last year at Tennessee. He was graded very, very highly. He's a big play merchant as well. A um, little raw as far as lacks some of the hip fluidity I think you'd like to see in some of these elite corners. But again, there's a reason why he's going in the sixth round and not in the first. Overall, I love the Chiefs continuously adding more bodies, some athletic bodies into the Chiefs defense, especially when you've shown with Dave Merritt and 
Steve Spagnuolo to get the best out of these guys. It's going to be the, the, the next in line of a late-round secondary member who's going to be an all-pro snub. I can feel it with Kamal Hayden. Hayden. Dang it, I said Hayden. You might be right. Is it, what is, I don't know what it is. I've been wrong before. Okay. I'll be wrong again. All right. Well, I hope not now. We'll have to check that. Uh he also began his career at Independence Community College. I don't know if a lot of people know that, yeah. but I was just excited to see that, obviously being a, a Kansas native. I, I wonder, though, is that when I, I need to look back? Last yeah, Chance U? That's Missouri. You? Come on. No, now, no. Was it. that Last Chance U? Was he on the show? I have no idea. With uh, Coach Brown, right? Yeah, I have no idea. That guy's crazy. Yes. But he's hilarious. You follow him on Twitter? Hilarious is a strong X. word. H- hilarious is a strong word. I think um, he doesn't care. He does not care. Yeah, maybe he should care a little bit. He, could, he, he, he should he, probably he, care he a little bit care more. At least a little bit. <laughs> it's so, kind of funny though. I like it on on Twitter. It kind of spices up my day a little bit. Mm. I haven't seen him in a while. Though. He's really toned it down. You, so. You're a hot take merchant. That's your go. Yeah. Your go to right there. Yeah, I like it. Uh, last pick: C.J. Hansen, six five, three hundred pound lineman out of Holy Cross. So yeah. he was actually the first player from Holy Cross to be drafted since 1989. And yeah. the the Chiefs put out a video, him hugging his parents, you know, the moment. I'm mean, so super heartfelt. I love when you tug at the heart. How do you not bit. tear up? Ah, I love it. You know, I yeah. mean, you got to be excited for a guy like that. The seventh round, you know, and I heard this actually um, from Anthony McGee, Chief Scout. He was on my show this week. I didn't realize, you know, by the time the sixth and seventh rounds happen, they're already calling up on the free agents. Yeah. So, you know, that seventh round is really um, a smaller group of the Chiefs front office. Um, they're making that last pick. And then the rest of the room is already, you know, making those phone calls, talking to agents. And so, uh, you know, you want to kind of say it's maybe not the biggest pick. But, I mean, we've seen a lot of seventh rounders go on to be big. I mean, Pacheco, look at him. Pacheco, I mean, uh, Jalen Watson. Um, the Chiefs have done a great job late in the draft of finding players who can, well, maybe they're not stars. They're at least players that make an impact on the roster. They, they fill out and they make the team. Nick Jones looked like he was going to be at least on the roster making some impact last year at corner, but the Chiefs were so dang deep. Um, this was a little more of a confusing pick to me. I, I thought maybe they would go with a running back. I thought maybe they'd try and get a little little scat back, someone as a, as a third down back, a Jarek McKinnon replacement. I thought Blake Watson out of Memphis may have made some sense here. But at the same time, you do have the contracts coming up of Creed, yeah. Trey Smith, and, and then the, the, the almighty question of, of Joe Tooney, what you're going to do with that contract. So they need to get some bodies in here. They don't want to wait until next year and then all of a sudden throw a rookie in there and have three new guys. No, they're going to try and draft and develop these guys. And, again, his RAS score was very high as well. They, they, they went for athleticism. They went for upside. Um, again, complaining about a seventh-round draft pick is just hilarious. Again, if I had my druthers, I would have liked to see a little bit more of a speed back. But they did bring in um, not Amani Bates. That's the uh, Amani Bailey. Amani Bates is, a, I believe, a basketball player. Amani Bailey, <laughs> uh, he actually graded very poorly in the RAS. But again, that's a one-day sample size. His tape at TCU, in my opinion, did not translate to his combine and all the, the, those those days that he he went about that. So I do think there's some hope still for Amani Bailey, even if the RAS is not great. So they still got their running back there. They went with a little higher upside guard in the seventh Um he might be a Hanson brother too, C.J. Hanson. I don't know if anyone's checked. Do you think he's one of the Hanson brothers? I'm not sure. Did that, not, did that joke sure. go way over your head? Yep. You have no idea yep. who Hanson is. No, I I, I think I do. Uh, mm, Bob. Yeah. No. Mm. Okay. You make these jokes, and they're they're too old. They're too, they're old for me. Everyone knows the band Hanson, the boy band Hanson. I don't know that Mbop. band. No. Everyone knows. I mean, Han- I think you know Hanson. Okay. You've heard Mbop. I'm not going to sing. Well, now you just embarrassed me on the podcast. So, I, no, um, no, I embarrassed myself, Bethany. I wanted to get back to, to C.J. Hansen, though, the Chiefs draft pick, which we're talking about here. Uh, he ranked fourth in the broad jump and sixth in the 40-yard dash and seventh in the vertical jump. So I definitely think his combine was a big selling point for him. Yeah. Uh, offensive linemen a lot of times do uh, have a, a high vertical jump. That That's their goal. <laughs> I'm kidding. Your sarcasm, little, yes, little too much no, for me no. sometimes. Um, but I do like his, his, the quickness, right? I, I do like his size. I do like his versatility. I do like the fact that he is an athletic dude who supposedly has a ton of upside. The Chiefs are making the right moves late. Again, was it would it be more fun to draft a seventh round wide receiver? Well, it's easier to say, oh, that guy had 600 yards, 700 yards. It's it's way more fun to see a seventh round wide receiver come in because there's typically a tangible impact 
We can't measure. You can't, can't measure, measure the, line, yeah. the value of a backup yep. offensive lineman. And so I think the Chiefs are building the right way. Building in the trenches is building the correct way. When you have the quarterback, when you brought in some of the flashy players of Hollywood Brown, your first rounder of Xavier Worthy, well, now you build in the trenches. You got to give Mahomes time. Give the give Mahomes time and the receivers time to actually break into their deep routes. That's what the Chiefs are doing. I love this draft. I love the process. Again, I keep saying the process because we won't we won't know the results. But I love the process the Chiefs had in this draft. Well, I trust Brett Beach with my life. So you know, you said he's building the right way, and and whatever he wants to do. I mean, he's proven it. You know, like yeah. you, people can doubt these picks all they want, or or a pick here, a pick there. But he knows what he's doing. Well, well you're not going to hit on every single one. Mm-hmm. It's very easy to say, oh yeah, Breland speaks, or or or. or um, Cole Hartman over DK Metcalf or trading back and not getting George Pickens and you drafted Sky Moore. No one's going to bat a 1,000, okay? It's can you be better than the rest of the NFL? And he's proven time and time again he has been. Batting a 1,000, that'd be great. That'd be amazing. Salvador Perez is kind of close to that right now. He's killing it. Yeah, he's been nuts, dude. I'm a, yeah, the Royals. The Kansas City Royals, they're good. Uh, it's fun. It's fun having two good teams in Kansas City. Yeah. Well, Sterling, thank you so much for joining us here tonight on uh, the NFL Draft Recap here presented by Missouri Farm Bureau Insurance. We appreciate it. So much insight and uh, looking forward to hearing more NFL interviews on your Around the NFL podcast, which you'll have not only Chiefs players, but the entire league. So that's always exciting. Yeah, I had Xavier Leggett on, had uh, Lad McConkey on, had Amon Ross St. Brown on. Uh, if you want, if, if, if Amon Ross St. Brown and Jared Goff and the Lions next year start speaking German at the line of scrimmage, if there's an audible in German, came from this guy, okay? So Chiefs players, learn some German. All right, we got it. Thanks so much, Sterling. I appreciate it. That'll wrap up tonight's NFL Draft Recap presented by Missouri Farm Bureau Insurance.